This is Turd Flinging Monkey for TFM News. I'm going to be responding to an article called As Rental Prices Rise, Women Stay in Bad Relationships to Survive in broadly.vice.com, written by Helen Nianius. Now, I saw this article being spread around Google+, so I didn't find this myself. I read it, and I'm glad I was sitting down when I did, because this article... It's going to piss you off because you're going to see the rationalization hamster run so fast it starts doing that Sonic the Hedgehog loop-de-loop thing. But it's a really fascinating look in the way women can take any situation where they're clearly manipulating and using a man and still claim to be the victim. It's unreal, but you're going to see it. This is a fascinating glimpse into the mind of hypergamy and this idea that women are always the victims and that women can always find a way to make themselves the victim in any situation, even when they're the ones victimizing someone else. When they're blatantly and admittedly using someone for their money, they can still claim to be the victim. Because vagina, of course, it's all it takes, vagina. You know, it almost speaks for itself. As with rental prices going up in major cities across the globe, a sizable percentage of women report being in an unwanted sexual relationship to avoid homelessness. So let's talk about that for a moment. People wonder why you don't see homeless women. Why? Where are the homeless women? Don't women fall in hard times too? Well, they do. But women have an option that men don't. You see, when a man falls on hard times, when he can no longer make ends meet financially, and he doesn't have enough money to make ends meet, and his parents aren't going to let him move back in, and he doesn't have a friend that'll let him sleep on his couch, he's homeless. He has no option. No one's going to take him in, except for maybe his friends and family. When they reject him, he's screwed. I mean, maybe unless he's gay and he can spread his butt cheeks for a place to stay, but really, really rare. Kind of doubtful. A woman, all she has to do is lower her standards and find a boyfriend to move in with. No threat of homelessness. That's where all the homeless women are. They're in relationships. Now, they may not be the best relationships. They may have to lower their standards, maybe date down, find a guy they normally wouldn't hook up with, but because they are in desperate need of a place to stay because they don't want to be homeless, they'll hook up with them. I mean, there's these women that, oh my goodness, they have to lower their standards. They have to spread their legs and have sex with men they normally wouldn't lower themselves to have sex with simply for free rent. Oh my gosh, the whore. The whore. The whore. And that's spelled with a W, by the way, not an H. Anyway, so let me just start this article. So near the start of the article, it talks about how moving in with someone involves a lot of financial issues. And it says, quote, It's these very financial issues that can morph into a form of abuse and control in a relationship. These scenarios run the gamut from, quote, We're not in love, but I suppose this will do until my next paycheck, unquote, to the much more frightening situation of living with an abusive partner and being too broke to move out, unquote. All right. Let me just back the truck up. So they're calling this a form of abuse and control. When a woman has the option of lowering her standards and moving in with a man with the express purpose of avoiding homelessness, this is a form of abuse. The woman using the man for his home and for his money in exchange for sex is a form of abuse against her. Her first scenario is, quote, we're not in love, but I suppose this will do until my next paycheck. So this is the woman talking. We're not in love, but I suppose this will do until my next paycheck. Like, I don't really like you, but I guess I'll stay in your place and I'll let you have sex with me until I get some more money together. She is using the man for his home so she doesn't have to be homeless. And she's the victim. This is a form of abuse against the woman. When a woman dates a man simply because he has a nice house and some money and she wants to take advantage of that and she doesn't really love him, that's abuse. She's an abuse victim. Oh my goodness. Where's the government to save this woman from having to lower her standards and spread her legs for a free place to stay? Holy shit. And there's always a villain. It's never their fault. It's never their choices. It's never their responsibility. It's the man victimizing her by opening his home and sharing his money with her. Oh my god, such a terrible person. And then it's society's fault for having rent prices that are reasonable. Or I don't get it. Like supply and demand. Economics itself is the villain, but not the woman. Not the woman who made bad choices and in order to avoid being homeless has an option that a man does not have and is taking advantage of that option. She's a victim. 
So now let's meet Melinda. Quote, Melinda, a 25-year-old administrative worker from London, knows this feeling all too well. After being fired from her job as a live-in housekeeper and nanny, she was thrown out in the street with little money. Well, if she was a housekeeper and a nanny, how is she an administrative worker? What the fuck? Did she major at administrative worker and couldn't find a job because she sucked? And she was living in someone's house as their housekeeper and nanny? And she probably sucked at that too, which is why she got thrown out on her ass? Anyway, let me just continue. Quote, I was squatting and sleeping on people's sofas for about a month, which was fine at first, but it got to get cold last summer, Melinda says. Melinda was able to land an internship in Kent. She also met a man through mutual friends who offered to let her stay in his house in Kent. I liked him, but I never wanted to be in a long-term thing, she says. After two months of living with him, the plan soured. The man lived an hour away from her friends, making Melinda feel isolated. He also became extremely possessive. I soon realized I wanted to leave, but I had nowhere to go, so I bit my tongue. It was a nice home, and he'd cook me dinner every night, but the weird thing was, because of this, he acted as if he owned me, unquote. The entitlement. <laughs> the entitlement. So, here's this woman. This man opened his home to her, and he cooked her dinner every night, and she felt like, oh, but you live too far from my friends. Oh, I don't, I don't like this. I want you to move so that I can be closer to my friends and have a free place to stay. And because he is sharing all of his resources with her and cooking her dinner, he act like he owned her. Like, it's so insane. And, you know, as I talked about in my other video about the hypergamy hippo thing, you know, when women are ready to move on, they'll just invent bullshit that you're doing wrong. It doesn't matter. Like, when a woman is into you, Everything you do is sexy. When a woman is ready to get rid of you, everything you do is terrible. I mean, cooking dinner for her every day is now a negative thing. Oh, you just think you own me. Because just because you, you give me a place to stay and cook me food, you think you own me? Mm. It, it's so stupid. This is how women think. This is female nature. Why? Why do guys put up with this? The Ballad of Melinda continues. Quote, after six months of living in this strange isolation, Melinda saved enough money to leave. A month after I left, he was still texting me all the time and he had offered me a monthly allowance to get back with him, professing to be concerned about me while really making a desperate attempt to exert his control. Unquote. Okay, so again, here's a guy. He obviously cared about her. I mean, he shared his, his home with her, cooked her dinner. She probably has, you know, has a troubled past. I'm just going to guess based on her string of unemployment. And she leaves him after saving enough money doing something, probably sucking dicks. And then he's like, you know, why don't you come back with me and I'll give you some money and whatever. And trying to compromise with her and she's like, he's trying to control me, offering me money. Oh my gosh, what a piece of shit. It's just so, it's so delicious. You just, the rationalization, if you're trying to make logical sense of how women think, it's never going to work. It's impossible. They're not rational creatures. I mean, it's clear that this guy is a good guy. This guy cares about this girl. Too much, I might add. But what thanks is he getting for it? Absolutely none. All of his kind gestures are being interpreted as creepy and controlling. It, It's just, it's a lost cause. Once a woman's made up her mind that she's ready to move on and you're beneath her, there's nothing you could do. Well, you could win the lottery. Then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, you're so attractive. Hmm. But short of coming into a lot of money, she's, she's ready to move on. She could do better than you. She never loved you in the first place. Now let's turn to the story of Kaylin. Quote, Kaylin, 23, suffered horrendous physical injuries at the hand of her controlling boyfriend, who she became emotionally and financially dependent on after losing her job. At first, Kaylin recalls her boyfriend was charming and enigmatic. You know in the movies you fall for the bad guy nobody else understands? Oh God, I, I can't go on. But he turned out to be incredibly abusive. We got together in October a few years ago. I moved in with him that November or December, and he started being violent in the February. I, I didn't know the February existed. Okay. He was on government benefits and lived in subsidized housing. Oh, we have, we have a keeper, gentlemen. A keeper. Kaylin was working as a waitress and didn't need to pay rent. She did end up paying for everything else like bills, food, and other expenses related to her boyfriend's drug problem and lack of a car. 
It's nobody's fault but- Oh my god, it's nobody's fault but my own, Kalen says? Oh my gosh, is that responsibility I hear? Is it the end of the world as a woman admitting responsibility for her poor choices? Well, let's find out. Quote, we'd end up in a massive argument or an all-out violent outburst. I was too weak to do anything. One of these fights left Kaylin injured and unable to come into work. She was fired. So, like, so she moved in with this clearly, clearly bad news bears guy. I mean, a drug problem, living in Section 8 housing, no car, making her pay the rent. And she's like going along with like, yeah, this sounds good. Why not? Uh, women. And at the end, to give some contact information, saying that if you are in an unhealthy or abusive relationship, seek help at refuge.org.uk or ncadv.org and theredwood.com. Okay, whatever. End of article. So, I like the transition, the very abrupt, <laughs> abrupt transition from a man who's just trying to help out to these abusive pieces of shit guys. And they're all just kind of lumped in together. Like, are you trying to help out a woman who's down on her luck? Oh my gosh, what a controlling piece of shit. You're just like this guy who's on drugs and welfare who beats the shit out of his girlfriend. You're the same guy. How dare you make this woman lower her standards by opening up your home to her in her hour of need. Ugh. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's really, I mean, not the abuse part. I mean, that's kind of funny in a schadenfreude kind of way. But... This whole concept is funny. This whole idea that this is a kind of abuse. When a woman falls on hard times and she has this option that men don't have. That she can just move in with a guy who will take care of her. And she never has to worry about being homeless. She never has to worry about eating out of the garbage. They never have to do that. In fact, if you see a woman on the side of the road with like a homeless please help, she is faking it. She is faking it. I have never met a legit homeless woman in my entire life. And they do all these exposés about women who hold these signs up, and they get like 10 times the money as men who do the same thing, and they're all faking it. They have like a car around the corner, and they live in a house down the street. So, yeah, if you're in an abusive relationship, you know, obviously that's bad news. If you're just moving in with a guy who's below your standards, that you would not be with, other than the fact that he's opening up his home and giving you money and helping you out, that's not abuse. That's not a form of abuse. That's you using a man... That's you being dishonest to the man. And he's probably hoping that, okay, yeah, she, I'm, she's only using me for my money, but maybe when she gets to know me, she'll love me for who I am and we can build our life together. That's what he's hoping for. These are good, decent men that you're just using for money. And you dare claim to be the victim? It's just this insane inversion of reality where a woman who's using a man is the victim of the man she's using. It doesn't make any logical sense, but if you're a woman, it makes sense because the woman is lowering her standards. And I've said it before and I've said it again, women don't use words because they actually mean what they say, they use words that get results. So for example, saying something women don't like. At one point it was called bullying. And then people are like, well bullying, I mean that's what kids do, who gives a shit, you're an adult, take it. I'm like, oh, well it's, it's not bullying, it's, it's harassment, don't you believe me? Oh, it's harassment, oh my goodness, oh, you're saying something women don't like, that's harassment. And then that didn't get the results they wanted. They're like, oh, now it's cyber violence. You're committing cyber violence by saying something I don't like. And they just keep escalating the word to try to get the results they want. So now, having to lower your standards is abuse. If a woman has to lower her standards and date someone she perceives as beneath them because she needs the money or the place to stay, that's a form of abuse. And well, we need government action. We need to lower the rent. We need to give women free money so they can afford a place on their own so they don't have to lower their standards because they're being abused by having to lower their standards. Oh my goodness. It's, it's abuse. It's just like getting the shit beat out of you. Having to lower your standards. Oh my gosh. The poor women's. What do you have against women? Why do you hate women? You want women to lower their standards just because they're unemployed and need money? Oh my goodness. So, you know, what else can I say? It's fucking retarded. It's fucking retarded. Welcome to gynocentrism. This is Turd Funky Monkey, signing off.